Welcome to Achievement Hunting 101. This is level 310. This is our live show. I am Big Al. And the whoop whoop you just heard was of our main man, Jameson, a.k.a. Wild West. What's going on, guys? What's up? And the man you didn't hear whoop whooping, or maybe he's doing it in sign language since it's our live show, is the Mainer man, Kush Moose, aka Nate. Whoop whoop. Oh. <laughs> we heard the I'll try whooping. We 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 heard the whoop whoop, but it was in the other uh other area. Yes, there was. You caught me off guard whoop. with that. Whoop, whoop. I gotta try mine too. Whoop. Oh, whoop. the tickle fingers? Oh, okay. No, no, right. Okay. Oh, what? I did tickle fingers when I said whoop whoop. Like the showgirls? <laughs> well, Not that I've ever seen that. Damn. No, mm-hmm. I don't. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> it's on your phone right now. Oh, um, no. I just need to log into Rec Room. Oh, uh, you know what? I'm going to lead off with the story now, now that you're reminding me, Koosh. Rec Room? Let's no. Go. Thrilling. Riveting. No. <laughs> I'm going to lead off right away with a story about a little to the left. So there are achievements for doing like 30, 50, 75, 100 daily tidies. And there's one for doing 30 daily tidies in a row. So before I went for 30 in a row, I had dabbled in doing a couple daily tidies. And I've been doing them diligently every night after midnight, as I've said. And I got 30 daily tidy achievement. And I at 93% for getting 30 in a row. And yep, I forgot to do it. You framed it. I framed it at 93%. So I guess I had two more to go. The good news is I still have to get 100 daily tidies in total. So plenty of opportunity to uh, make up for that. I thought about doing the computer date trick, but I said, no, there's no need to do that. I uh, will own it. And get it next time. Yeah. Is it because you still had to do the 30 in a row? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You couldn't figure out the computer trick? No. (laughs) Every time you say uh, daily tidies, I always just think of whitey tidies. Every (laughs) single time you say it. I mean, that's like weekly tidies to be be tidy (laughs) whiteies. Yeah, you're thinking of tidy whities, and that's like the fruit of the loom Mandela effect with the uh, little, I don't know what that is. What do you call that thing that's in there? Looks like a grape, grapes. I don't know. Let's try to think of where you're going with that. And I didn't really want to take oh, it. Uh, <laughs> Those no, aren't grapes, little... and your dad didn't have that talk with you. I don't um... About tidy whities? No, about the grapes. Oh, the grapes in my underwear. Fruit of the looms. Oh. Yes. Um, yes. Still waiting for anyway. Oh boy, <laughs> I'll leave it alone. Yeah, I will say I'm glad I don't wear those anymore. Boxers are way more comfortable. We've always been asked about boxers or briefs. Now's the time. Boxers, come on. Are briefs even a thing? Yes, what are you, are you guys embarrassed? Come on, guys, wake up. I do briefs when I work out. Really, he likes it snug. Yeah, you don't need things wandering all over the place when you're... You don't do Stu Commando? <laughs> do Commando? Yeah. No. no. Yeah, you work out in your own house. I don't work out in my house. I go to the gym. Oh. Oh, right. Bikini briefs all the way, baby. Oh, like, like Borat style? <laughs> like European style, I guess. Oh. <laughs> all right, we are here to talk about some video games... And it is a new month, July 2024, which, of course, means there are new targets, which I love talking about. Now, it wouldn't be July without bean diving. Uh, To those people who never heard of bean diving, it's when you start a game, get the first achievement in the game, and put it down and don't play it until RTDL tells you to. Or is that just for me? Maybe. But it uh, generally just means that you pick X amount of games and start them by getting the first achievement. And it 
hits your completion percentage for a certain amount and you try to recoup said completion percentage throughout the year. That's basically what it means. Uh, this started with TA member Bean Potter many years ago now. It was he, he came up with this on a whim and now just starting a game is called Bean Diving it now in some circles. I know I've used it. But uh, for the targets, the purposes of the targets, you need to start one game for the bronze, two games for the silver, and three games for the gold. So easy task. Start three new games. I don't think anyone will complain about this one, but you never know. They're forcing me to play games. Oh, my God. Sure, people will complain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put sure three new games on my tag. I can't do it. No, no. Kush just started three games while I had this talk. I started three games by accident. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like game pass, game pass. Uh -huh. Oops. Oops. I was just trying to see, you know, what you know what was in Game Pass and I accidentally started five games. So <laughs> oh the game que uh, the quest told me I can get five cents from starting a game. Whoops. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Not even five cents. Like oh. a fifth of a cent. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it. They all add up. Mm -hmm. uh, the second target of July is called Here Comes the Sun, which sounds suspiciously like what I used to tell Fufu to go get some sun, because he's pale as a ghost. I hope that man is doing well. Here Comes the Sun is earning three or more achievements with the letters S, U, and N in order in the achievement or game name, but the letters do not have to appear consecutively, thank goodness. And this is where the button to show which achievements count comes in very handy. It's three for the bronze, six for the silver, and ten for the gold. You know it's a good game for that? Mm. Coffee Talk 2. Sunny with the word sun in. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Uh, why Coffee Talk 2? Because I've already completed the target, as Kush and I found out earlier today. <laughs> we were talking mm. about it. All right. See, this this podcast comes in handy. I am I'm a big fan of Coffee Talk too, but more on that later, I, I think. And uh, speaking of gold, the Olympic Games. I'm guessing those start this month. I've heard zero talk about it. And that's for earning five achievements in games in the sports or action genres. And that would be a 200 gamer score is a bronze, 400 gamer score is a silver, and 600 gamer score is gold. Did you find any easy ones for that one? Uh, Balotran. That's neither sports nor action. That yeah, counts. Uh, didn't make... That counts? Is that an action game? I mean, it is TA, so you never know how they're going to hit that genre button. By now, accident. oceans, it becomes uh, aquatic. <laughs> You're surfing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm sure we'll find something easy to uh, to to find. I still can't get the original Balotron to start up on my Xbox, which is just ridiculous. Yeah, you're right. It, it, it's action. I'll be damned. <laughs> I used those already trying to beat you. No fair. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. Failed miserably. So those are the targets for July. Uh, we have a new contest slash community event on True Achievements. It is called Boss Rush. And Wild West has been texting me incessantly saying that he would like to be the one to talk about it. So now is your chance. All lies. Okay. Uh, so for the uh, first 10 days of July... If you go on to the TA page and register, you can start the Boss Rush event, and they will release one new boss for each of the first 10 days. Um, the boss will have a health bar, and you attack uh, the boss by earning achievements. So whatever your TA score that you earn for that achievement will uh, take the boss that amount down on its health bar. Um, as, as we've seen so far, each boss will have a strength and a weakness. Um, so uh, the first boss that they released on July 1st was the Flood, coming after Halo. Um, it had 1,000 TA total health, 
and a weakness for it is the first person shooter genre so it deals two times damage so i'm guessing if you get an achievement that's worth 10 ta it'll actually worth be worth 20 ta um but uh it has if you try to get achievements in the survival genre you'll only deal half damage to it so be looking at the strengths and weaknesses for each boss to see how efficiently you want to take it down uh, as kush and i were looking at earlier some people have done it in one hit which is just crazy uh, the second one was released today, um, and it is Ripto from Spyro, I guess, is what we found out. I'm not a, not a big Spyro fan, but I got the collection We're that I want to do someday. <laughs> oh. I got the collection for five bucks at Walmart, so I'm hoping to get it someday. Uh, but this one has 2,000 total TA, and it also has its strengths and weaknesses that you can look up uh, each day. Um, and like any other event, just make sure you register before you start getting achievements because you can get stuff and it will not count unless you register. So you'll have all the way through the end of July to kill all 10 bosses. To, and you need to do the first four bosses uh, by the end of the month to get your badge. So if you're looking for a TA badge, get in there and uh, get the first four done as uh, as quickly as possible so you can get your badge. But I think it, it sounds like a fun event. And for the math inclined, while it's not a math podcast, the order of operations apparently does matter. So they apply the uh, the weakness modifier first and then the strength modifier yeah. after. Okay. So if, like day two where it's um, uh, achievements do half damage and then the you know, that's the weakness and then the strength modifier is they add 50 TA total. That's where it really matters. So when they double or the half, that doesn't matter so much. But when they do, you know, you know how it works. It's math. It's not math, but it's math. But yeah, there you go. So if you're trying to do it in one hit, pay attention. Don't just listen to us. Do your research. We believe what Kush is trying to say is that you get a community badge for killing the four uh, first bosses, and then you're out. <laughs> if you want <laughs> to, yeah. to, you could do that too. Yeah, you just badge now. <laughs> no, Obviously. we got. It. I, I think there's a fun one to maybe go for all ten, but we'll see how uh, how uh, hard the first four are. I suppose. I think these are more meant to be fun than difficult. So get the community involved. Yeah. And this is a new and different. So always a plus. Do appreciate the variety. That's for sure. It does make me miss that game. Uh, what was that? Boss Rush 101? Is that what it's called? Or Boss something? <laughs> Oh, Something like that. Boss 101. Wait, what was it? No, he's talking about the free game. Oh. Was but, it not yeah, called Boss Rush? Said, I think it was Boss Rush. I think Boss 101 sounds right. Yeah, that game was awesome. Definitely it was, not. It was literally just bosses. Someone's going to remember. Free for me. Yeah, because I pay attention. Just saying. It's just still in the store. The Mental's going to buy it for all of yeah. us. Yes, Boss 101, Donnelly Time Foundation. Oh, it's just Boss Time, 101? Time Foundation. Yeah, okay. Boss Thank 101. You, it only costs $15. Uh, they just made it like three bucks. If you're a sucker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Looks like we're going to get right into Game Showcase. Unless there's something I'm forgetting, which is very possible. Now, if you're on our live stream, Kush is definitely going to show us video footage of the games we talk about. Absolutely. What you could go wrong? Definitely remember to do this. Nothing can go wrong. No underwear ads can accidentally be uh, on the screen. Not by accident. Nope. <laughs> and just and, like that, uh, Rocker's out. We lost a, <laughs> we lost a viewer. No, no, Rocker had to pay the fine that we incurred for that. So... Um, <laughs> He's not Andy, had that to, Andy, had sleep, Andy had to sleep on the couch, so it was a double penalty. Because we cats. <laughs> All right, Kush, it's your turn. It's your turn. Well, thanks. Thanks for asking. Uh, I'm going to be talking oh. and turning off the sound. No, keep it. I heard a frog. really weird. Oh, no, that sound's supposed to be off. I don't know. There's a frog. Uh, let me talk about a game. Talk about a game <laughs> that I know I've recommended before or at least told myself I would recommend uh, having not played it until just recently. Um, 
as I do, uh, a game called uh, Time on Frog Island. Now, the thing I love about this game is that it's cute. It's Mm. it's a cute game. It's cozy. Um, It starts off with you uh, on your sailboat in a storm, and then bad things happen, as you know, as they do when you're the only person on a sailboat uh, in a storm. So you crash land on this island, uh, and there's some frogs on the island. And I guess that's why they call it Frog Island. Uh, is everybody a frog? Maybe everybody's a frog. Huh. Yeah, look at that. That looks like you. Um, uh, so it's a cozy, <laughs> it's a cozy 3D game with three quarter. Well, I mean, you, but the island is inhabited by right, frogs. Right, right, right. Yes. I just thought frogs, they were like, they were just really ugly. Uh, actually, one of them was an axolotl, 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 which I had never heard of until recently. Um, boy, I'm sure, case, your daughter knows it's a three, yeah, it's yeah. a thing. <laughs> so, it's a 3D game with three quarters perspective view. Uh, if you're here in the uh live show, you're seeing it on the screen. If you're not, you're listening, and I'm trying to describe it. Uh, it's in the style of Wind Waker, which is obviously the best looking Zelda game to date. It's obviously. not even a contest, definitely not even a contest. Everyone mm-hmm. knows this, yep. Um, <laughs> not even gonna get mad. <laughs> so, this game is uh, you run around, you explore. <laughs> Uh, everything is told through uh, thought bubbles. So when you're trying to figure out what to do and you talk to people, you don't actually see text on the screen that would be really helpful. Instead, you see thought bubbles with pictures of items like and uh, either question marks or exclamations or, uh, you know, people being angry, like mental language. Um, so you yeah. have to figure out uh, what they need to do. Uh, so a question mark typically means uh, bring them something. Uh, and then an exclamation might mean, oh, well, I'll give you this. Uh, your goal uh, is to repair your ship. Uh, I believe there's four things broken with it. Uh, you need to repair, and then you need to leave the island. But before you can leave the island, you have to do a couple of things, like uh, there's a race you have to do. Uh, I think you have to build a house. Um, more on that later. Uh, the best way to play this game is going to be, I think, two and a half playthroughs. And I suggest the first playthrough be a blind pay- playthrough for the most part, where you're not really looking things up. You're not trying to do uh, speed runs. You're just exploring the island. You're figuring out the puzzles. Um, you're just having a good time. The game plays with a day-night cycle. So as you're, as you're going, the day will start out. You'll go. Eventually, time will pass, and you'll be in nighttime. Now, the nice thing about this game is it doesn't force you to go to sleep, unlike uh, Arcade Paradise, for instance, where you'll pass out in the arcade and you're forced to go to the next day. Oh, God. Uh, in it's this game... Chima called Yeet? In, uh, in this game, you can stay you can stay awake uh, and night will never pass. And so you can do things that require you to get them done in one day uh, that way. Uh, unfortunately, the townspeople um, go to bed. So if you need to bring them something or talk to them... Uh, they will go to bed at a reasonable time, and then, like a gamer, uh, you'll stay up late when everyone else that has sense has gone to bed, and you won't be able to talk to them or complete quests that, that where you need to talk to them. So you'll have to go to bed and start the next day. The way you go to bed is by starting a fire. Um, there will be these little campfire spots around the islands. I should say there's multiple islands. There's the three main islands uh and you'll you'll just have to put fire three pieces of firewood into the fire ring uh and then you can save that will also save your game uh and it'll start the next day yeah so w- what you're trying to do is basically just complete quests you're going to be talking to people they'll have little things for you to do you're also trying to figure out what's going on uh with this island uh there there's a whole bunch of things that i don't think are important for achievements, but I feel like they're little things that the developer put into the game just to make it kind of cool. Like, for instance, there's nothing in the achievements or the quest that require you to play uh, Frisbee golf. Yet, there are Frisbee golf goals all over the island, and I just want to know what that's about. Like, I haven't figured it out yet. And I haven't gone to, uh, I haven't gone to the internet yet uh, to get my bing points to try to figure it out. Uh, there's also lily pads. When you jump on these lily pads or pieces of ice, uh, a chime uh, you know, a little, you know, chime plays and it increases as you do them within a certain amount of time. So you can tell like, oh, it's, it's trying to tell me to keep you know going and get all of these uh, and then something will happen. Right. But I haven't seen anything happen. So I'm not really sure what that's about. Uh, I need to research that and see if I'm just doing something just a little bit wrong. But uh, but yeah, I, I 
love this type of game. It's exploration. It's cute. Um, and uh, there's, you know, it's it's a little bit like a Zelda in that uh, the way you figure out, you know, the world, the way you figure out the quests or the solutions even to those uh, is part of the fun. It's, you know, um, so going and reading a walkthrough or a guide takes that away from the experience. And so I wouldn't want to do that. Now, I'm not everyone, and I know this is an achievement-focused podcast, so people are just trying to get their score and get out. But I would recommend uh, taking your time with this one. Uh, like I said, two and a half playthroughs, the first one being uh, you know, a blind playthrough. The second one, uh, you're going to go through and do a speed run, because there's one achievement for completing the game within five in-game days. And uh, on TA, through achievements, there is a pretty good guide to kind of to kind of lay out what you need to do on which days to get that done. I think that'll be really helpful. Uh, and then the third day will be a partial playthrough, just cleaning up things that you haven't done yet. Um, uh, Fug says that you have to pay a lot of attention uh, on the walkthrough. I think that uh, if you're playing and playing this game kind of solely, this is the only game you're playing, I think it, it'll be a lot easier. But I think if you're splitting your attention across multiple games, yeah, uh, that could be a thing. Um, but you know, I don't know with my experience. Uh, I, I think that if I go in and I do that, uh, that five day run, I think I'm in a pretty good position to do that because I have been spending so much time getting everything else done. Uh, as far as the other achievements, um, you get achievements for repairing your sail, your rope, uh, rigging, uh, your wheel on the ship and the rudder on the ship get an achievement for each one of those. You'll be getting achievements for doing some tasks around the island. Some are tied to achievements. Uh, and you'll also get achievements for doing things so many times. And that's what uh, L was talking about, the yeet. Uh, the yeet oh, achievement sorry. is for throwing, a thousand, <laughs> yeah, for throwing a thousand items. Uh, and the way you throw an item is you just hold the X button and then your guy will kind of like lean back. And then when you let go, he'll throw it. it. Uh, what, you can do for, what you can do for that one <laughs> is go stand near a wall uh, and throw something like a mushroom or something and like it'll kind of yeah. bounce back to you and pick it up there are drinks in the game that will give you special movement abilities uh, or special abilities and one of them uh, will help you pick up things that are far away so you might want to save that one until you have that ability and then if you have uh, i don't know a nephew someone who can play games for you you could kind of park in front of a wall and just you know knock that one out uh, when you're doing something else there's also an achievement for jumping a thousand times that can be done very easily later in the game. Once you have a bed, um, you can just stand on the bed and your guy will jump a thousand times by himself. You don't have to push a button. Uh, there's an achievement for walking 10 kilometers, but uh, apparently <laughs> the developer made a mistake. They entered too many zeros. It's actually 10,000 kilometers. What? And um, so, so what you do for that, there's actually a nice in-game workaround. You don't need a Cronus or anything to do this. Uh, there's a something that happens when you pick up a beehive, you just automatically start running and you can't stop running and you just have to change direction. And not only that, but you run at a faster pace. So that's actually perfect for this purpose. Uh, there's one space in the game that has a really small, you know, circular, or actually it's an oval area. And if you just stand in that area with a plugged in controller and then go away for a couple hours, and by a couple, I mean like, depends on how long you play the game. Uh, but if you've already played the game a bunch, like I have, uh, and then go do this, it, it probably ran for about five, four or five hours, and I got it. So is that 10,000 kilometers? I don't know. Is that 1,000? I don't know what it was, but it took hours. Uh, it took hours after I had been playing the game a bunch. So that is one thing to be aware of. Just set that uh, when you have a couple hours and you don't need your Xbox to do anything, and you don't have to worry about it. Um, I did see an achieve, or I did see a comment that said that might be on one save file. Uh, it doesn't have to be all in one sitting, obviously. I, I feel based on how long I played, but uh, you may want to take those things into consideration when you go to do it. Um, for me, like I said, it took about four or five hours of just letting that thing run while I went and watched some TV. And finally, there's achievements for doing uh, two sets of quests in an order that you wouldn't normally do them. You wouldn't find them in the games. Sometimes we call that sequence breaking. Uh, one of them is sequence breaking. The other one is just, you know, I just wouldn't do this. Uh, it's, you know, doing certain quests before accepting a quest reward uh, and putting it on your ship, basically. Um, so, you know, that's not something you do. They give you something shiny, you go do the thing with the shiny thing. Uh, but if you hold off, you'll get an achievement for it, and you'll do that on your, uh, your second or perhaps your partial run. Uh, but there you go. 
that's time on frog island uh very cozy cute game it's you know i think the joy and the fun in this game aside from getting the achievements is uh the discovery of everything they've done there uh and just kind of enjoying it is it a pretty big island or is it pretty is it difficult to find things or well okay so as you're running around you'll kind of see something you'll be like oh this guy needs a saw i know i saw a saw uh where was that and you'll be like oh now he needs a hammer where did i see that hammer i know i saw it so if if you're going guideless you're gonna have those sort of situations if you get a great memory that'll that'll be really easy for you Uh, if not you could use a guide and then i'll help you to go find things um a lot of times um not, I shouldn't say a lot of times, but sometimes when you're doing uh, the bartender quest, there's a bartender and he asks you to mix special certain beverages for him. And <laughs> beverages consist of two ingredients, you know, uh, and he mixes those up. So if he asks you for a piece of fruit, pretty much any piece of fruit will work, even though he said blueberry and you give him an apple. I think the, the solutions say it doesn't really matter. Like, just just give him a piece of fruit. Um, so, but I, for the most part, like I said, I was doing a blind playthrough for most of it. Um I just kind of did what they told me. Um, How long is a blind yeah. blind playthrough? Gosh, how long have I played it? Um, let me just take my time and subtract five hours. Uh, so I currently have 13 hours in it. So I put about seven to eight before I just let it sit in idle to do the jumping, to do the throwing, to do the running. So I, I would say I'm about, mm, about seven or eight hours before you get your first playthrough done. Uh, that's your natural blind playthrough. Your speed run, I think, will take, I don't know, Fug apparently tried it a couple hours, two hours, something like that. Three hours, maybe. And then your partial, you know, you should be, if you do it all in, you know, about the same time play-wise, you know, you're not doing this a month later, uh, that should go pretty quickly because you know where everything is. But how big are the islands? Not that, Not that big. It takes maybe a minute uh to run across them and there's three there's basically three different uh islands um four i guess technically if you want to call this other area uh and uh three of them are accessible from the start the fourth you have to do a you know a little bit of unlocking uh a little bit of progression to unlock that area yeah so this game seem uh uh mm. <laughs> the the time on frog island seems like it would be welcomed on game pass it just seems like a good game pass game it does it really does and i was surprised yeah that it wasn't it was like i never i'm sure it It will be be, yeah uh, oh of course i'm sure it will be now that i've that i've started it uh (laughs) and paid for it he's basically saying get on it yeah well you know wait but it it was a great sale when i got it yeah, so I imagine, yeah, you paid the five bucks, right? Yeah, this was a twenty-five dollars. Uh, price was five dollars. Yeah, yep. so this is a twenty-five dollar game, so that's quite the discount. Yes, I would not pay twenty-five dollars for this. I don't think people would be super happy with twenty-five dollars. Right. I mean, if it was uh, licensed, you probably would, but um, if it was sure. Kermit the Frog Island, you probably mm. would have. <laughs> mm. <laughs> when that was not a good Kermit. Uh... Marka Marka. Wait, uh, <laughs> so are you going to complete this game now or what? Yes. Uh, yeah, I've, um, I have one last thing to do, which basically is just a, a race. And I, I think I know everything I need to do to do that. It should only take me five minutes to do the race. Uh, and then I should be able to leave the Island. That'll be my first playthrough done. Uh, and then I'll do the, uh, I'll do the five day playthrough and then I'll just clean up whatever I haven't done, which I think is, uh, the order of operation stuff. I'll just knock those out in a third playthrough and, and call it a day. Okay. And did you say that you have to do those play a bunch of playthroughs anyway, or because you did the first one blind? Because I did the first one blind. Uh, and I okay. think because so you of your stuff. time constraints. Yeah. And your time constraints in that, um, in that five day playthrough, I think are going to keep you from being able to knock out the uh, right. sequence specific stuff. Right, so fifteen to twenty hours sounds about right then. Yeah, now you could be crazy and try to knock it, you know, try to compress that and get it done super fast, and that might be part of the frustration. Um, I'm gonna take my oh. time with it, two and a half, call it, call it good. So that's what fuck. You know, some people, yeah, some people do the hard <laughs> mode and the no hit, 
all in the same first run when they oh, don't know how the game works. Sure. That's not, you know, that's not how I'm doing that. Nice. All right. Anything else you have on Time nope. on Flat Island? That is it. All righty. Thank you for that. And Wild West, it is your turn. All right. Uh, so my game I'm going to talk about is Castle Invasion Thrown Out. Uh, this is, uh, TA classifies this as an action game. Uh, it's kind of like a tower defense slash action game because you, you do, uh, you're trying to protect your tower that you're on. You play as an archer uh, and you have people trying to come over and take your uh, castle. Uh, first, you'll see there on the screen, you've got peasants and they'll come and try to attack. And what you'll do is you're on the castle wall and you can move up and down. Um, Behaviors. And you... What's that? Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Just reading the words. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the the enemies will come in different lanes, and you'll just move up and down on the castle to to uh, shoot them. Uh, you'll start off with an arrow, um, a bow and arrow, and you'll just, uh, you know, as they come to, as you can see, uh, they'll come to the screen. You'll move up and down, and you, you'll shoot them and kill them. And then when you kill them, you get money or gold. And you can use that gold to upgrade your equipment. So you kind of see there the arrows are pretty weak there at the beginning. Eventually, you'll be able to one-shot them. Uh, or I guess I think two-shot them is at the end with the arrows. Um, they don't shoot very far either. And you'll be able to upgrade your, your bow so that your drawstring will, will shoot further away. But uh, you'll see your castle help, health up there at the top left. Uh, you obviously want to get through all the enemies before that gets to zero. Um, and then, so basically you're just coming, uh, you're just protecting the castle. You're just, as the enemies come, you're just, you're killing them. Uh, you can use your right bumper to go two screens in the future to see kind of what's coming and prepare. Um, that'll also be useful in the future with your weapons. Oh, there, there it goes there. So we went past to, to the next screen to kind of see where they're at. Um, the, uh, so yeah, so you can kind of prepare and see where they're, where they're go or where they're coming from, and uh, eventually you can shoot pretty far, so you can actually shoot off screen if you want to. Like what I was doing towards the end was kind of going to the next screen and just kind of shooting my uh, whatever weapon I was using, and then I could kind of plan uh, to help prevent uh, crowd control there at the at the castle. Uh, so this is what he's doing now. He's in the screen there, his upgrade screen, um, and uh, you can see it takes you know fifteen gold, twenty gold to upgrade your stuff. Um, you can replay levels, so if you want to farm levels and get up upgrades, you can. Uh, eventually, as you go forward past uh, certain levels, you'll get access to new weapons. Um, so you'll get access to a spear, a crossbow. Uh, you'll get access to... What is it? I can't think of the last one. You'll get access to different weapons, and you can upgrade those weapons as well to help you out. You cannot go back to... like. Right now, when I get access to the spear, I can't come back to this first level and use the spear. You can only use it on the levels that you can use it on. Um, and you shouldn't need to go back anyways and, and use the different weapons because they're usually uh, specific to enemies that you're trying to kill. So eventually, I don't know if we'll throw it in the gameplay, but eventually you'll have uh, different enemies like a, a knights. Knights are bigger. They're like triple the size. You see dwarves. Dwarves will, uh, there will die in one shot. Uh, but the uh, knights that come on the screen, they're really big guys. They've got a shield. You'll need to use your, uh, your uh, what's it called, spear to, to kill them. And when you, part, uh, each of the different weapons will have attributes that can help you out. The arrow doesn't really have any attributes at all. But the spear, eventually you can upgrade it. So when you hit a knight, it'll push them back and also daze them so they won't move for a few seconds as well. Um, so, you know, it's, it's good to kind of farm some levels at the beginning, get your stuff uh, get your weapons up really good. But see, there you go. So he's going past the screens, kind of seeing where things are at. He's upgraded his arrow, so it shoots farther now. Uh, but, I mean, it's, it's a fun game. Um, each level has three uh, objectives that you need to do to get uh, stars. And there's an achievement for getting 150 stars because there's 50 levels in the game. Um, you can earn, like, two stars on one run and then go pl replay the level and get the one uh, uh, one run uh, sorry, uh, you can replay a level and get the other star that you're missing 
and get that uh, on another run. So you can kind of mix and match. You don't have to get all three stars on one run. But overall, the game was kind of fun uh, to go through. I, I finished it in a few days because I was having a lot of fun with it. My youngest got really into it and was telling me where all the people were coming from and what weapons to use and everything. Um, this is a, a timed level. You'll have a couple of those throughout your playthrough. You'll also have some night levels, um, which will have some, uh, which will have you use fire arrows, um, and we'll have torches that you need to keep lit so you can see where the enemies are coming from. But that's that's basically it. Is just you want to go through each level. You'll get achievements for upgrading all the weapons. You'll get achievements for beating the levels. Um, every ten levels, there's a boss. You'll get achievements for beating the bosses. Um, and then you'll get achievements for getting different, you know, the different number of stars in the game. So uh, the the TA genre is action. So it's a good game. It's five five dollars right now. I don't know if I picked it up on sale or uh, I don't remember when I picked this up, but it is definitely, uh, you know, would help out for your targets this month if you want to do something on it. Uh, it's about a let me see. I have four and a half hours in it. It's a five to six hour completion. So not too long. And uh, I had a lot of fun with it. Yeah, I like these types. I like these. They're like fun little uh, <clears throat> play a little bit at a time. It's no big deal if you come back to it later. Yeah, this is definitely um, a game you play three or four levels and you can move on to whatever main game you're playing at the time. There's the knight right there. So you want to use your spear. You can change your weapons in the games. Uh, he doesn't really have the stopping power right now, but at least he's damaging it. If you try to shoot him with an arrow, it won't do anything at all. Well, here's another one that counts as action. So that's uh, yep. good. I like the achievement names. Yeah, they're pretty fun. Exchanging peasantries. Spear me the pun. Yeah, very pun heavy. Uh, I'm gonna have to, uh, <laughs> wow, this is all puns. Yeah. Just a fletch wound. Wow. Let's see if it's been on uh, sale. I think Elroy would like this list. So the cheapest it's been is a dollar ninety nine. That's probably when I picked it up. So sixty percent off. I mean, this game's pretty old already, 2016, so this is probably uh, not the quickest of completions, but a pretty quick completion back then, yeah. five to six hours. Now you could play, like, 37 games. Yeah, now you could start a bunch of visual novels and all this other stuff and be done and get about 30,000 so gamers score. So there's 50 levels. Would you say they're pretty easy to figure out without a guide? Yeah, there's not really, there is, a, uh, I guess, thank you for bringing that up. There is a walkthrough on the game. Um, the walkthrough doesn't really, like, hold your hand on doing stuff. Um, I didn't really use the walkthrough because there's really no point. It basically just lists out the objectives for each of the level. Um, it does give you a little mm -hmm. bit of hints on what you can do, but the main thing is is you can do each individual star every time you, uh, every time you play a level. Like, you don't have to... Uh, you don't have to get all three stars on the level. So some of them will be like complete the level. So that'll be an easy one to do. Other ones will be like on the night levels. Don't let the torches go out more than five times. You can let some of the torches go out and just not restart them. And then it'll still count for that because you're not actually shooting them back on. So, I mean, it's, it's stuff that's can be a little difficult. Some of them were hard. I would say I probably had about eight to 10 of the levels that were, that were hard that I had to replay a few times, but I didn't, think it was anything too bad okay you know to be honest the puns are putting me over the top here i might want to get this one yeah put it on your even, put it on your price price <laughs> list and just on ta i am even even the game description says the the full to bursting with awful awful puns <laughs> yeah definitely british humor right i assume it's a british right british game well, I'm looking at the achievements to see if there's weird use. I don't see any Here's, weird use. In the cutscene, in the opening cutscene, behavior was spelled oh, wrong. Opening? Well, there you go. <laughs> I don't know. It's Cat Trap Studios. In it. That's where I came up with that. And, you know, we have people in, in our Discord, like Skeptical Mario, who's just very British and likes to do puns all the time. Uh, yeah, it looks see, like it. They're independent Cat developers trap. in Yorkshire, UK. There you go. Yorkshire. <laughs> I think that's how they pronounce it. Cat Trap Studios. There's way too many cats in, in the Xbox. Stop it. Oh, somebody wake Sorry. Stop. Somebody wake Stop Chewy up and dogs. Stop trying to cats. make dogs a thing. They're not a thing. <laughs> dogs are a thing. They actually this is exist. Not, this is not a dog podcast, please. 
It, sh- it should be. Right, well, Bailed. maybe Bailed maybe not. Maybe later. <laughs> but first, we will thank Wild West for talking about Castle Invasion thrown out and thrown as spelled like what a king sings on, sits on, T H R O N E, or what I sit on when I'm on my phone. Thrown out. All right. Well, it wouldn't be a live show without me talking about some baby games. You mean any show? So, it wouldn't. What do you mean? <laughs> dare you? It wouldn't be a show. Well, it wouldn't be the beginning of a month if some baby game didn't accidentally show up on my RTDL. And I was inclined to play it just for that reason and no other reason. I wanted to talk about The Traveler's Path. And I really hadn't heard much about this game. It is, of course, from my favorite publisher, East Asia Soft. And right now, it's only worth 3,000 gamer score. Because it came out in November. I guess we're going to be due pretty soon for the next... Um, for the next update. So the reason this was interesting to me is it because it reminded me of the puzzles in Bioshock, the little pipes that you spin around and try to make the water go from one end to the other. I assume you guys know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They're an so arcade was... paradise, too, just saying. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Well, you should listen you really to Bioshock and Koosh just falls asleep because of the bump. Yeah, you really yeah. want me to play that game? I'm uh, just saying. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to. Um, but when I did some research, it said there's a game called Pipe Dreams that is all this kind of stuff. So real quick, as you've seen in the video, basically you're the, this traveler and you have blocks and you, wow, this is in a different language. And uh, (laughs) you make the traveler go from point A to point B by rotating tiles and moving tiles around and their roads. And some of them curve and some of them go straight. So it's really just like the Bioshock pipes. Um, As the levels get harder, there's going to be some blocks that you cannot rotate and some blocks that you cannot move. So you have to, they get a little bit harder. But honestly, I did the entire game without a guide. Uh, What I generally wound up doing is I just started at the exit and worked my way to the front. And that seemed to work. Uh, There's certain levels where there's two travelers. And it was a little bit more difficult. You just had to chart two paths instead of one. Uh, There's other levels where there's coins. Where you have to get a bronze coin, a silver coin, and then a gold coin. So they tried to vary it up a little bit, but overall it was pretty easy. Uh, the good news for Achievement Hunters is that unlike most Asia, East Asia Soft games, uh, you only have to do the levels you need. You don't have to do any other levels. So once you do the first few, you'll you have to do like levels 20, 24, 28, 32, for example. Anytime you finish one, you hit start and you just chapter select and you could do the one you need. The only time where this is an issue is when you get to 48, you have to do 48, hit next, do 49, hit next, and do 50 to get the last achievement, because those don't show up on the chapter select until you beat 50 for whatever reason. Um, This was a nice, I don't know, this is, uh, I wouldn't quite call this a cozy genre, but this is kind of cozy to me. This was a puzzle game that I could do without needing a guide and without really thinking too hard. Either of you play this, gem? No, uh, but when I saw it, I was like, ooh, I like those uh, yeah. pipe puzzles from Arcade Paradise. Son of a gun. <laughs> yeah, I did this last month for my score month. Was that last month or was that two months ago, right? I, think it was no, two, I, guess, I guess two months now. Yeah. See, I know. Time is moving. Yeah, so this is only 3,000 game score, so, you know. <laughs> and if you're watching the video, Darth Maul is playing the levels for some reason. Well, it's it's funny. Uh, not many people have uploaded their gameplay to YouTube, <laughs> which is weird. You would think a quality game like this, people would really want to show off their skills. Um, so we're kind of, you know, limited um, in our choices. 
in the chat, The Rock is asking if it's one of those games you're better off to wait until it gets the 5K update. And actually, no, because like I was saying, uh, you could just choose the levels you need to do. So when the new updates come out, you could just go literally right to those levels and get them done without having done them previously, like the other games. So that's a nice feature. I hope you knew about this uh, Wild Westy. They didn't have to do all the levels. Oh, I know. Is it, is it familiar? Okay, you knew. Okay. But yeah, this is, sure. this is one of those levels you have to get all the coins to progress. You can't oh, yeah. go at the end of the level. Yeah, it's really easy. Just chart paths to the coins, and it, it it knows to go in order. You don't even have to, like, try too hard. Yeah. Right, so it'll get the coins for you. You're not steering. It just kind of goes. No, through. no, it doesn't. Oh, and at the gotcha. end, you see it's, you completed in 16S. So it's not really mm -hmm. 16 seconds. It's basically 16 steps. So what that theoretically means is there are different ways to solve uh, the puzzles. So you can uh, go against, uh, you know, yourself and try to do it in fewer steps. There's probably a leaderboard out there, but in Perch Human Hunters, it's it's uh, inconsequential. Is that all I wanted to say about this game? Yes. So overall, I liked this game. I'm going to assume it's a puzzle game. Good. Tia got it right. And it's a puzzle game. <laughs> um, so that was the Traveler's Path. And... I wanted to contradict myself from earlier and tell everyone that this is indeed a dog podcast. I wanted Ooh. to talk about another game with dogs in it. Kush knows what it is, but Wild West maybe doesn't. Game of, the year. game of the year. Game of the year. Game of the year. Yes, game of the year. Game of the year. Bluey. <laughs> now, as it turns out, this showed up on my RTDL and... I had no idea that this game was four players. So I told my son, when I get home, we're playing this, get four controllers ready. And you know, my son and my daughter, and we reluctantly grabbed my wife and made her play. I right, fast forward a little. We don't need to see the, uh, no spoilers. There's, there's no spoilers in this game. You don't, well, well I, I mean, you have to figure out where the I wanted to get is. to the game. That, 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 that's a lie engine. We have to watch the gameplay. Yeah. Um, so the it, it, you probably haven't played this in four players. It is wild. You're, everyone yeah. is going off and doing what they want to do. And I think just the first player or whoever gets to the progression marker first, just <laughs> it does that. It is wild. Um, I believe if you're playing as one of the smaller characters, uh, Bingo or Bluey, you can ride on mom or dad's back. So there's actually some co-op stuff there. If you're playing in single player, they just kind of walk around aimlessly and you have to kind of chase them. So that's easier in co-op. But other than that, um, <laughs> not so great in co-op. I hate to say it. Maybe two-player co-op would be fine. But four players is a little manic. Uh, I do have a complaint about this game. Okay, kick them off. And you, you won't, I don't think you'll be able to. Because there's no sequel? <laughs> there's no sequel yet? Is that? It's a strictly L complaint. Oh, they speak Australian and there are no. Come on, guys. Shrimps on the Barbie? I don't... Subtitles. There's no subtitles. Mm. Wow. Which is surprising because. Even if you, uh, you know, can understand what they're saying, there's uh, hearing impaired folk, right, that could benefit from from having subtitles. So I like having subtitles on, especially with the kids running around and screaming. And I don't know. My favorite character is the is the dad, of course, <laughs> because like every so often he's like, "All right, I'm going to go take a nap now." And then my daughter laughs. is like, that's you, dad. I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> I said, that's all dads. It's because of you people that we have to nap all the time. Yeah, that's right. That's right, Catster. Subtitles are important. The mix makes it hard to hear. Yeah, the mix makes it hard to hear. It could be the mix. It could be the air conditioner. It could be the phone going off. It could be anything. Subtitles are just the best. And so right now we're watching a video with no... With, uh, with no sound, if the subtitles were on, we could see what's going on. 
It'll be great. I'm surprised there's no subtitles. I normally right? turn them on as well, but I guess because I love it so much. I you tried. Didn't you didn't even notice. I tried. Believe me, I tried. Uh, did you notice the idle animation in this game, Kush? Um, I'm sure I noticed some of it. Yeah, I just I love their the way their tails wag. Uh, no, that is incorrect. There is no idle animation. They just stand there and don't they don't even blink. Mm. It is really freaky. Yeah, they just they just kind of stand there. I still like to know how they get their eyebrows to like just kind of float in the air like that. That's kind of freaky. The uh, Japanese itis they have. Saving it for yeah. the sequel. And then the platforming is, as you can see, is just wonderful. You fall right in the uh, in the sandbox or wherever, and you just warp right back to where you were. Uh, the game has some mini games as well. There's four mini games to go along with uh, the four levels in the game. Now, I was a little confused because the estimate time on TA says two to three hours. But the episodes were really short. They were like 10 to 15 minutes each. They were they were super short. But then I realized there's a lot of collectibles. And my daughter started finding uh, them. So if you don't have a uh, nephew, you could find a daughter to help. <laughs> and we all have daughters that have played this game. My youngest the correct plays it almost every day. That's awesome, you know. That that's just awesome. Which one, your eldest? No, my youngest, my five year old. She, oh. <laughs> uh, I collected everything. Well, my oldest would play it. She's playing Hogwarts right now still, but my youngest asked oh, to play nice. it. I, I collected all the stuff for her, so she'll go into the box and put on whatever hat she wants or whatever, and then she just runs around and plays and has a great time. I mean, my daughter's eleven. I mean, she. Yeah, I guess you don't outgrow Bluey. It's just it's just easy. It's fun. Are you sure you checked in the settings? It says you can do it from really uh, languages. Yeah, you have to go to languages. You can activate it there. That's the Steam version. Should... I would assume that the Xbox version Kish also lets you. Not going to let this go. No, I'm not. Let's do. Some... I'm not. You can download it and check it. I'll out later. boot it up right now. Let's see. Damn. No, you don't have to. I'll check it later. I, I'm going to violate the playing during podcasting rule. Oh, for the first time. <laughs> yes, for the first time ever. I'm loading it up right now, so. I'm Options, making a note. Language, subtitles, what the hell? <laughs> oh, uh -huh. You Everyone. just got pushed. Oh, uh -huh. you know what? I was trying to do it during the game. You pause during the game. Uh -huh. Wouldn't you think uh -huh. there's an option there? Yeah, well, we got our cold open right now. <laughs> you just uh, got pushed. wrong. <laughs> L was right. I don't think uh, so. Deleting the Leave your character right standing. Now. Let's see if we have some idle Just edit all this out. I, was, I, I could not be incorrect about this. Mm. There's subtitles, Koosh. To be fair, I probably played about 15 minutes of this game. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, some things I've had the noticed. completion. Okay, so I do have the completion. I'm just really efficient. You can't oh, do it the in rocks because they added it. I think they just added it during the outage, uh, the Xbox Live outage. Oh, that we yeah, had. they added it today during that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> forty million you people know what? shut down, so we're gonna add subtitles on Bluey. Still worth it. <laughs> Still worth it. Oh, son of a gun! All right, well, I got to start this from the beginning now to get the full. Uh, story you can't yeah you, you don't want to miss anything you can't do it in game, though. oh yeah so as you find the collectibles you'll see that uh the characters start wearing random clothing and uh, artifacts and hats and earrings and um uh, look at the eyes look at the way the eyes move oh this is so good it's so good and what so do you think that if a game is a game pass game they chart how many people start it and go from there like how do they know, like, what would make them make a sequel? Like, buys or or Game Pass um, starts? Well, how you much, know what I'm trying to say? Like, it's probably how much money they made. That's pretty much it. So they, right, you assume that they got X amount of money from, I don't know. Well, whatever contract, we, we've heard a couple different. You either get an upfront amount, you get amount per downloads, you get amount per... You know, they've, they've talked about a few examples. So if they've made money on it, which I'm 
would be surprised. I mean, I guess it's a licensing thing since it's Disney. Oh, I didn't know Bluey was lefty and Bingo's righty. I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot. I pay attention to these kinds of things. I feel bad for this dad. Yeah, never can take a nap. I mean, who would live with just only females? It's just ridiculous. Oh, hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look, at least they have dad's dad there. All right, well, that was Bluey the video game. And you don't even have to worry about achievements. They'll just come. There's a couple where you have to go back to earlier parts of the game if you miss them, but nothing's missable as far as I know. No, I don't think so, no. Because you can, at the end, after the end, uh, you just go back you can go to any of the parts and just collect anything you need to so i don't think anything's missable yeah i don't think anything's missable and i think things are for the most part in sequence so like when you see them in the book like you can tell about where they are so i did have I to do a little cleanup that's why it took me 15 minutes to play the game so i'm just saying i mean the collectibles all sparkle some of them are a little bit off the beaten path like on the beach there's kind of a hidden section that i saw and there's a watering can you have to find the water and then find the plant you gotta water so yeah. if you have a little little kid it might be a little bit difficult but it's really meant for the young ones but i think it was really smart to make a four player so to get the whole family involved it's probably best with one kid and one adult playing together yeah that's what i would go for um and we can't go without mentioning how superior this is to uh, Peppa Pig. My Peppa Pig. Oh, definitely. And if Peppa Pig got two games. I'm just saying. Uh, we need that. We need that sequel. We need that follow-up. Louis Grand Prix. We know. We need to know how it ends. Oh, Louis <laughs> Grand Prix is definite. <laughs> they're doing. Oh they're man, they're doing all the other stuff. Come on, I mean, Paw Patrol has one. The pizza car. You can have the pizza delivery car. You can. We have, could do a, oh. a Smash Brothers clone. <laughs> Smash Brothers Club. <laughs> beat Just beat up other. on a dad. <laughs> yes. Yeah. When this leaves Game Pass, you guys are both going to be forced to buy this if you didn't already. I'm sure you did. <laughs> Tell me you did. No, not yet. You have the physical version on all the consoles. <laughs> no. All right. Bluey the video game. Uh, there was a quick bit of news. Everyone's favorite game. Power Wash Simulator got some new DLC today. Was this one of the ones on the chart that they had? Because I didn't remember uh, that being on the chart. You guys know what I'm talking about? I remember the chart, but I don't I haven't played it yet, so I don't know what was coming. It's Alice's Adventures DLC. I really don't remember that being a thing. I don't know how this game manages to get all these licensed dlcs but this is alice in wonderland i figured it out <laughs> didn't take you half a playthrough <laughs> i figured it out i saw the uh, cat thing in the pictures cheshire cat no i don't know yep what it is i got it right sweet yeah and there's uh 10 new achievements it's a power wash is the game that keeps on giving me a headache. Whew. Oh, I took Michelle out of Mall. Hi, Michelle. Michelle and Fug say it's not on the original roadmap. I guess it's a new roadmap. Here. Oh, Kitoki, Shmoki, Silioki. We're going to go to Kusha's third favorite part of the show sales. Got any tabs open? I do. Thank you asking uh first off yum yum cook star three dollars down from 10 this is a simulation game it's got three stars i don't know how many people voted for it because i didn't look that up uh this is a game for those you mm. know people uh who like games where you actually prepare food uh you serve it up you, you chop it up you mix it up uh instead of just serving it you know because i've heard some people don't like those types of games repeatedly uh well next up we have axiom mm -hmm. verge 2 which is $8 down from 20 with a platformer Metroidvania. 
Uh, if you know anything about Axiom Verge or the Axiom Verge series, it's from a small dev team, one guy, and I think he had some contractors help him out. And I think the second game, he had maybe a little more contractor type help. In either case, small dev team, one or slightly more than one. Uh, and the sequel is very, uh, very much, uh, or I'm sorry, this is a sequel to a very much Metroid-like game. So if you like the original Metroid, uh, Axiom Verge is a lot like that. Axiom Verge 2, I think, is a little bit more melee-focused than weapon-focused, ranged weapon-focused. I haven't played it yet. I actually haven't purchased it yet. I'm picking it up in the sale. Next up, we have Steel Assault, which is $7.50 down for $15. It is a platformer with pixel graphics. It looks a little bit like Mega Man-ish, but um, uh, the combat doesn't quite evoke that like it doesn't look like you're picking up power-ups from each of the bosses you beat it just looks like a fun kind of you know sega era sega era uh sega genesis era of those types of games which i like and lastly we have hazel sky which is ten dollars down from 25 this is an adventure game and i seem to remember this from the sizzle reel uh the indie dev you know the uh, uh id at xbox excuse me I did Xbox Sizzle Reel back in 2022, uh, and I thought we'd see this in Game Pass, but we didn't. Um, it's a good-looking adventure game. Uh, I'm going to pick this one up, I think. It's got pretty good score on TA. I didn't write it down, but I thought it had a good score. 3.8 from 15 votes. Hazel Sky. <laughs> That's a lot of votes. All right, to go back to your Axiom Verge talk, I believe the first one is like two or three bucks, and the bundle of both of them is ten forty nine. So if you have neither of them, that's a good sale. Ten forty nine instead of thirty instead of thirty four ninety nine. That is true. Yeah, I forgot about that. I was only thinking about myself. <laughs> Not everyone has every game that ever existed, uh, except for Mental. Yeah, I wish I had waited to buy the bundle because I bought the first game and have barely played it, of course, but I support any Metroidvania game that reminds me of Metroid. And I think in a couple of weeks we're going to get our last 360 non-backwards compatible sale. So that should be interesting. I'm not really hoping for much, but I know there's a lot of like Connect Fun Labs on sale and all kinds of crazy stuff. But uh, one game you should get is uh, Strider on the backwards compatible, a non backwards compatible sale that is like a dollar fifty, and that's ridiculous. So get that one. And I think Arkham Asylum and Arkham Blackgate are the other two veiners. If you're into that kind of thing, those are five dollars each, seventy five percent off. Wait, if we're talking Just, about this is the last time to get those. We're talking about Arkham. Should we invite Elroy on if we can get? <laughs> no, <laughs> he's banned from the show after the last time. You know this. Definitely get Blackie. And even if it doesn't go on sale, I wholeheartedly recommend Dust and Elysian Tale. You like that game? Yeah. So just it, you know, wait for the last uh, announcement. It's not going to be in there, but wait anyway, and grab Dust. And we might have some new listeners, Koosh. You never know. It's true. You never know. But yeah, if you go on our Vayner's channel, Neo keeps track of all the Vayner's that are on sale every week. He does a good job. Uh, Wild West, did you want to talk about any games? Uh, yeah, I got a couple. Um, Cake Bash is on sale. It's a party game with a 3.6 rating. It is $6.99, down from $19.99. Um, all of the Crisis Remastered games are on sale for $10.49. It's one of my favorite shooters, and if you don't want to pick up the uh, the disc with all of them on there, then you can get them all individual if you want to, just buy them at a time. Uh, John Wick Hex is $1.99 right now, so it's pretty cheap there. Strategy turn-based. Uh, I believe Kush talked about Nuclear Blaze before. That's four dollars and ninety nine cents, mm -hmm. and then uh, Turok is four dollars and ninety nine cents. That's a eight to ten hours, and it's the uh, remake of that game, and you get to kill dinosaurs. So what's not to love? Oh, oh, just buy it, and you'll find out. <laughs> uh, Nuclear Blaze is great. 
Is it now? <laughs> yes. Right. Five to, five bucks. Uh, yeah, I, I endorse that. No, Turok is uh, not the N sixty four version, right? No, that is total so. horribleness. Don't play that one. Not for fun. Not for achievements. Just don't play it. Game Pass news. We got today, which is very exciting. Wild West, what do we got? We did. Kush was super excited to jot all of this stuff down. Uh, oh, yeah. We, we got some good news today. Out now, we have Journey mm-hmm. to the Savage Planet is back on Game it's Pass. Woo. But it does have a DLC. Um, this one does not include the DLC, right? Isn't there a... I don't know about that. I didn't, I didn't do my research. I didn't I see know. anything. So. But it goes yeah. on sale all the time. But it does. Yep. Yeah. Yeah does go on sale it's uh so journey to the savage planet is on cloud console and pc first person shooter platformer metroidvania 21 to 28 hour completion uh we got nickelodeon all-star brawl 2 on cloud console and pc a fighting game 12 to 15 hours hold on hold oh, on oh. nerdy neo he he's he's been looking for any vayner keyword and he says <laughs> uh, journey to the savage planet uh, does not have the DLC, so uh, he can he can relax now. We've we've said it. We've said it. Oh, I thought we... you were going to tell me that Cricket has a double jump. <laughs> we uh, we said Vayner's too much, talking? and he popped up right. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, 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 Vayner, Vayner. Oh <laughs> no, we love you, nerdy. Um, all right, uh, July 9th, Cricket twenty four oh. on cloud console and PC. L is going to be rushing out to get play that. Oh, discontinued Chivo. Um, oh. Yeah, it does have one discontinued. In the show notes, it says crickets, and that's accurate. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Weird. Also on July (laughs) ninth. Who put that? Also on July ninth, it's the case of the Golden Idol on cloud console and PC. Uh, Steam has it as a mystery detective uh, game, so that piques my interest. Uh, But it is pixelated gameplay, possibly some Mad Libs solutions to cases. So. I call it Mad Lib. She wrote. Uh, it's, a, it's an old man joke. Sorry. I call it That's the case of the Golden Big L because you're, uh, we're going to play this together. Uh, July 11th, we have Neon White on Cloud Console and PC. Uh, looks like a platformer. We also have Tachia on Cloud PC and the Xbox X Series S. Uh, it looks like it's an open world action adventure game, 20 to 25 hours. Uh, July 16th, we have Magical Delicacy on Cloud Console and PC, Action Adventure, and Possible Metroidvania. We also have a Flock coming out on July 16th on Cloud Console and PC. Well, you know, just making sure you're awake there, Uh, Flock (laughs) Flock is an adventure uh, publisher by Annapurna, so we know Kush will probably get right on that one. Yep. Oh, she's, she's hot contractually required to check it out she's flocking hot <laughs> she's flocking hot <laughs> what the fuck all right uh july 18th we Coach, have come on. dungeons of hinterberg it's an action rpg role-playing game and also i'm looking forward to flintlock the siege of dawn uh role-playing open world action rpg on july 18th as well so that looks uh i'm definitely looking forward to that one uh july 19th we have kunitsu gami path of the goddess Action adventure, possible tower defense, definitely tower defense. Uh, the demo is out now if you want to try that. Uh, and we- I played the demo, and that's why I changed it to definitely, definitely tower defense. Definitely tower defense. So. It's definitely tower defense, but you also get to do some uh, combat yourself, just running around hacking and slashing and placing your units, and, whoa, placing your uh, archers and your woodmen and such uh, in various places. Uh, it's fun. I, I like it. Uh, yes. I don't think Alan Wake's going to come until they release the physical version, Rock. I believe that they'll put that out for a few months, and then it'll probably uh, come out next year sometime on, on Game Pass. Since Epic published it, they probably want all the sales from that on the the uh, physical. Anyways, uh, we did just get news that Frostpunk 2 got delayed to next year, so that is not coming out this month. But So that is what we all have coming to Game Pass in July so far. Uh, leaving Game Pass, we have uh, Figment 2 Creed Valley on cloud console and PC. Action adventure game, six to eight hours. On PC Game Pass, we have Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion. It's a strategy real-time 
possibly about a 50 hour completion. There's not a lot of uh, completions on that. I was looking at that earlier today. Uh, Toem is on cloud console and PC. That is an adventure game and Kush talked about it on level 263 and it's a six to eight hour completion there. Uh, the Wandering Village on cloud console and PC. It's a simulation management game, 35 to 40 hours. Probably just end up buying that one myself. We have Cricket 22 on cloud console and PC. So we have sports, <laughs> crickets, more crickets. Crickets all abound today. More crickets. More crickets. <laughs> uh, and lastly, uh, we have Coffee Talk Episode 2, Hibiscus and Butterfly on cloud console and PC. A visual novel with a walkthrough. Uh, anywhere from 8 to 15 hours, depending on if you use the walkthrough. Uh, L talked about it on 248. Uh, I just started it today and I'm playing through it and enjoying it so far. So, All right, well, you know what now, I'm going to ask you? To, <laughs> do you well, first off, real, real quick for mental, do you have to uh, make the drinks yourself or are you just serving them by pushing a button on the machine? So you have three ingredients that you have to choose from to make the drink. Sorry. Well, you have you have more than three ingredients. You have like I don't know, fifteen ish, twelve to fifteen ingredients. They'll tell you. So far, what I've been to is they'll be like, "Oh, I want something that's like straight coffee." So you give them like coffee, coffee, coffee to have an espresso, or I want something that's a little sweet, like chocolatey or something. And so you'll give them like chocolate, milk, and honey or something. So they give you little clues to what to do if you don't want to follow the walkthrough and know exactly what to give through. So cool. But El, what would you like to say about coffee talk? Well, I was going to ask you, of course, are you actually reading the dialogue? Yes. Okay. Of course. Why would you it not? Sounds like you were, because you said you were enjoying it. If if you're just uh, mashing through, then you're obviously not going to enjoy it. You can. So, you know, speaking in that, um, you can. Uh, there is a fast forward button on there if you don't want to, if you're pressed for time or you don't care. Or there's an auto button, so you can just like, kind of let the uh, dialogue go on. But. I enjoyed the. What if you read fast? If you read fast, can you still read, but like skip ahead? Yeah. There, yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Oh. Yeah, if you read fast, you can mash through, and in true visual novel fashion, if you skip through a line, there's a button to hit where you can see the bunch, you know, the last bunch of lines. Okay. You know what I'm talking about, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there's three options in the menu that you can choose from. So, so what can... I would suggest with two weeks left is. You can use the walkthrough and still enjoy the game. So, like, there's three different walk playthroughs. There's the, what is it, like, the good, the bad, and the really stupid. Yeah. More or less. Yeah. Or, like, you mess up every drink they ask you to make. Yeah. Which is just, even if you were trying to, you wouldn't do that naturally because it's just weird. But, yeah, use the walkthrough read the dialogue and on the second playthrough there's it's a very helpful button where you could fast forward but it'll sh uh there's an option that'll show you the dialogue that you haven't read yet so it'll stop there and it knows what you've seen and what you haven't seen oh, okay all right follow up um oh. i see your play time <laughs> now now remember we don't yeah. talk about l's play time <laughs> Okay, we won't talk about else playtime, but I've heard that some people have played this for sixty-two and a half hours. <laughs> well, they just love I the game. How to read? Is there? Uh, I don't know. I can't you explain that one. Sorry. Okay. Okay. No, that's fine. That's fine. That's I can. He was answer. playing it right before bed, multiple nights, fell asleep playing it. Playtime. I used first. this yeah. to make actual coffee. Uh, <laughs> I used all the ingredients in the book. Went and, and found some hibiscus, blackberry. found some mint, found some honey and ginger. Mint and ginger. Yeah. In other play times of like 16 hours of people that probably read it. That's probably, is, a, is that like right when it came out? Because without any kind of guides, you're probably looking at like yeah, 12 exactly. to 20, you can, 10 to 20 hours. It's not that long, even if you read it. Come on. Cabo, you there? You were asking about this. Yeah, you know, we talked with them earlier. I'm yes. here, Boston oh. Sox. Oh, you're right. There you're we right. go. There we go. Retro Chief knocked it out in six hours. So, well, I'm sure he read. He reads he, fast. He was he's tired. He's got nothing else to he do. He was doing projects, holding down the button to fast forward it. Yes. You know, <laughs> he's probably painting the house at the time he did Retro it. Retro Chief, how dare you, sir? Oh, there you go. Six hour game. 
And much like the first game, there was the challenge part where uh, it's not the story. There's a little challenge where you just tells you to make a drink and you make a drink. But the guides are very good for that kind of stuff. So you'll you'll get it done. You'll get it done. Are you done reading from the list? I am. We are all done. That's all the games leaving Game Pass in uh, by July fifteenth. <laughs> I was, I was looking just for the heck of it at cricket because you know we're like, oh, it's cricket. Who plays cricket? And I have uh, twenty two friends on my friends list who have played the cricket game. So more than I would have guessed. Yeah. A lot of them are from the UK. Go figure. Man, mental night. <laughs> and freaky row. Yeah. Plenty of people play cricket. I think some of those must have been dares, but cricket twenty two. I have twenty two friends. Well, I think it's, How about that? isn't it like the second most popular sport in the world? Uh hmm. yeah. Cricket? First is American football. Second is cricket. <laughs> Third is baseball. Yeah, sure. Fourth is basketball. Fifth is hockey. And sixth is golf. And seventh is soccer. This is very easy. And then eighth is badminton. And then ping pong. And dead last, of course, is tennis. All right. That leads us, of course, to our Gamer Tag Challenge, in which I'm going to win yet another glorious prize from Kushmus. Not that that works. Uh, so um, let's, let's, let's talk about June. Last month was June. And our Gamer Tag uh, phrase was June bug. You're spelling June bug. Uh, our wild card was any new achievement or previous completion in a game released in June of any year. Uh, we had a bonus Entomology 101 for earning achievements with bugs, spiders, or other creepy crawlies in the achievement title. And our bonus bonus was do you want to build a bug man? Ooh, you, you. Uh, and that was for building the biggest peed by earning achievements with an incrementally increasing number of O's in the achievement title. See, it's easy. Uh, we had seven participants. We had 38 letters. We had 48 completed phrases. We had six wild cards. And we had 10 creepy crawlies found. Uh, then when it comes to building a bug man, we had, uh, let's see, we had Northern Lass with three and we had Chewy with six. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's, that's where the creepy crawlies found. Uh, in terms of who found the most creepy crawlies, Northern Last found three, and Chewy found six creepy crawlies. In the Build a Bug Man contest, which is where we were giving out points for the top three places, uh, we had Northern Last uh, with three uh, th three O's uh, for five points. We had a tie of Crunchy Goblin and Chewy with five O's, and Ben L72 got the top spot with six O's incrementally. Our winner, when all was said and done, Northern Lass, uh, who spelled the phrase, got a one wild card and had a total of eight bonus draws. So congratulations. This is July. So the July gamer tag is stars and stripes. Uh, that's what you're spelling. Our wild card game is any new achievement or previous completion in the open free world genre. Uh, that's one bonus draw. Now uh, you can use that for any letter you don't uh, have in your catalog. Our bonus is USA. Earn achievements containing the letters U, S, and A in order. Non-consecutive is okay. That sounds a lot like a, uh, a target this month. Um, one draw per Chivo, max 10. Uh, and our bonus bonus is fours of July, uh, earning at least four achievements in a game. It's uh, four points per set of four. <laughs> Limit one set per game, and you've got a max of 10 games. I'm kind of kicking myself for not doing Forza July. Uh, but there you go. It's too late. Thirty well, cents down. Oh, you fours. said. Oh, wow, that's funny. No, okay. Fours. One, two, three, four. Not... You could do both. Of July. Nah, it's too late. Okay. So once again, congratulations, Northern Last. If any of that sounds fun to you, or you want to know what the heck we're talking about, go to the Discord and look for the Gamer Tag Challenge Room, uh, or uh, channel as they call it, uh, and we'll. You can sign up there. You can talk, ask questions, that sort of thing. All righty. Uh, we have a patron drawing as well. And the winner of the patron drawing is... Stega. Just happens to be here. That's awesome. Still here. I know he was here at the beginning. What are the odds? Well, Stegosauruses never go extinct, so Stega is still here. I'm sure of it. 
Oh, there he is right there. See? Congratulations. And now we go on to Brackham Koshmos. In completions, we have Gabby 900 with 50. We have Jeremy DJ with 350. We have LA Jester with 400. We have DJ Zibby Man with 600. We have What the Fug with 800 completed games. JZart 43 with 850 completed games. And we have Dish with 1,650 incredibly difficult games. <laughs> In streaks. Uh, we have yeah. Lucas 1987 with a 50 day win streak. We have Oz Buffanatic with 150 days. Wild West 08, I knew that guy with 400 days. And a Heizo, who we still like, with 550 days, yeah. even though yeah. he doesn't like Fallout. It's debatable. Uh, some more than others. Uh, celebrating their annual win streaks, we have Chris Bud 20 with one year, and we have the Z Drunken Monkeys with three years. In gamer score, y'all have been lacking because I've only got two people to talk about: Ben L seventy two with six hundred and fifty thousand gamer score, and Waka Pale with one point six million gamer score. In leaderboards, we have Kitty Skies at the top two hundred of the gamer score leaderboard for simulation. We have Cerebral Assassin in the top twenty of USATA difference leaderboard for point and click. And we have Lucas. 1987 is number one in games played leaderboard for action adventure. Now, does action adventure count as action? I'm going to say no, right? No. Uh, I think it's a separate genre. Yeah. Usually you have to get exactly yeah. what it asks for. Mm -hmm. All right. I was going to say to ask Lucas for target ideas, but. You know what? Just spam Lucas anyway. He'll know. <laughs> uh, we had a brag in the Brag Camp channel today from Killer Bees, who completed Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, which is a very difficult and long completion. And he said his final hour count was 100 hours and 11 minutes. That's absurd. Congratulations to you. You are welcome, Stegosaurus Games. All right. So in the patron channel today, uh, a couple of you noticed that we paused uh, charging you guys for July. And that is because we are, uh, after five years of going weekly, uh, we're going to take a little bit of a break starting now. We've gone hard for five years. And the podcast, as you know, it is not going to be the same. Uh, we will have extra content uh, here and there. Uh, but for the summer, we are taking a break. Our kids are home from school. Uh, They're all five years older now and stay up way too late. We are very tired. We have vacations planned. And that's that's what's going to be. Uh, we're not going anywhere. We're still going to have our Discord. We're going to have contests. Uh, we're still going to have everything except a weekly podcast for now. Uh, hopefully, we'll take a couple months break. Uh, we hopefully come back. And if we don't, we don't. But we love you anyway, except for a Heizo, I believe. That is the running story of the day. Uh, as far as the patron goes, uh, Patreon, we're going to pause that for a month or two. And what we're probably going to do is revamp it and make it a little bit cheaper. Uh, we still have fees to pay as far as hosting the podcast. Uh, it's up on various places, and that all costs money. So we thank everyone who's been contributing for the past five years. and. Uh, Kush, if there's anything I missed, please let me know. Oh, yeah, we're going to continue doing um, community uh, things like Game Tech Challenge and things like that. You know, um, that's also what Patreon went towards. So we're going to continue doing that sort of stuff. And maybe we'll be able to focus on that a little bit more um, when our time isn't all go going towards recording and editing and such. So um, if you have any ideas for what you'd like to see, it's a great time to tell us. Um, 
Yes, please. During please. this hiatus. And uh, we do have some extra content in the bag, like I said. Uh, Elroy and X, of course, have some stuff. I believe that's them, right? And there's like yeah. a 17-hour Master Raiders. Um, yes, if you have been paying attention, the last uh, the last epic episode of Master Raiders has not been aired yet, but it, it exists, I'm told. It exists, and it will be coming out. I think it's 5.0 because it's five hours. I, so the, first, we might... the first part is, yes. <laughs> so we might, uh, I think we should do that in parts, but that's up to the editors. Uh, whoever it's they a War of the Rings be. epic. Oh, yes, yeah. the extended edition. He can't say that to Ellis because he doesn't know what that means. No, he doesn't know what that means. But then the director's I, version I of mean... it will be out following, and that takes three days to watch. <laughs> yep. All right, well. I would say the hope is is that I'm hoping, you know, late summer, early uh, fall, I can learn from Kush on what to do and try to take over and, and everything. But plans change, so we'll see how things go. But. Well, well, Kush lost his laptop in the streams of uh, the ocean, the beach, the oceans of Maryland. The ocean, yes. Yeah, he went. He dropped his Vita and he picked it up and he dropped his laptop also. So his Surface, his Vita, his laptop, all in one go, and just mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know why I kept them all in the same pocket. That was that was foolish. <laughs> um. So. Um, we're going to go on to Ducky Races right now for the live chat. And I will talk freely after we stop. Um, thank you so much for all of us for listening. And class is dismissed. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you, patrons and everyone else. Bye. See ya.